Hello, this is Michael Wojak with the City Council update for December 6, 2010. In between shifts of um, clearing off my driveway from this massive snowstorm, I thought I'd take a little bit of time and um, give you an update on what was going on with our uh, City Council this week. A um, little bit different meeting this time. Nobody was there asking me to um, apologize for being mean to developers this particular time around. Um, I very much appreciate the feedback that um, I got in the whole controversy of sorts. It appears rather overwhelming that um, the public appears to believe that my questions were both in line, appropriate, and that tough questions should continue to happen. Um, a few things I'm going to talk about here. We approved a few more contracts. Again, it's the um, the advertised rate is employees are getting a 1% increase. The reality is they're all over 5% increases in total compensation. Um, I also wanted to point out, reading through my packet, which I generally find is a good idea for um, council members to do, is um, I, I noticed that there was something that um, we were talking about reducing a um, transaction fee for pawnbrokers, and right inside the um, write-up, it, it actually said in our packet that um, this does not cover the costs of, um, of um, t taking care of the um, pawnbrokers. I'm like, well, if it doesn't cover the cost, why are we lowering it? And I asked that question at the city council meeting. It seems like with all the other um, budget challenges we have, perhaps um, subsidizing pawn shops would not necessarily be the best use of our taxpayer dollars. So I brought that up and said, hey, why, you know, why are we lowering this fee if it doesn't cover the cost of providing the services? And um, I have to admit, I'm kind of shocked, but the city council actually agreed with me. We voted 5-2 not to lower the fee. Um, um, voting um, those that thought we should have lowered the fee were um, Dennis Hansen and Ed Ruska. Just doesn't make any sense to me. Why, in God's name, of all the challenges that we have, should we be in the business of subsidizing pawn shops? It just seems silly. Although um, later on, John Wade did take exception to um, passing that on um, in some of his comments. Um, Next up, um, we had um, a liquor license for Bratz Bar and Grill. The neighborhood was opposed to this. Our community policing were opposed to this. Basically, the um, person that would be starting this up um, had a history with the Windy City Grill of um, a business that essentially became a uh, gang hangout and just a complete lack of control of her business. And um, on top of that, she's um, doing a bunch of work in her building without getting any permits. Um, so I thought that, um, you know what, maybe, just maybe, it's not in our right interest to um, be issuing this woman a liquor license in the neighborhood location that she's in. And um, the city council agreed with that 7-0. Um, the woman who was applying for the liquor license um, did not bother showing up, and we subsequently got a letter from her that she's interested in um, reopening the hearing. And um, I don't know if I really want to reopen the hearing, but what I would be willing to do is um, submit any comments that she had in writing and add that to the record. But um, Public safety is number one, and I just don't feel that um, giving this particular woman a liquor license is in the interest of public safety. Um, we had our truth and taxation hearing. Um, same old, same old. We had we had one woman that came up, and um, I was rather amused by this. She said that the um, you know libraries are not core services. She didn't want us um, investing in new parks for the city. Um, I guess I respectfully disagree. I believe in the amenities of a great community. I believe in the arts in our community. I believe in a strong library system. I believe in a strong park system. Not the least of which because those items actually contribute to giving our youth something positive to do other than going out and committing crimes. Um, this mentality that a city should be nothing but police, fire, and roads, I completely disagree with it. And as long as I'm on the council, I'm bringing that, um, that mentality forward. Um, one thing that was really cool is that somebody did come up during the um, truth and taxation hearing and said, look, I moved in, I, I've lived in other places. Um, taxes in Minnesota are phenomenally low for residential property owner, owners. Bought my house in um, 1990. The taxes were 900. Today they're 2100. Um, that's um, 21 years later. I did the math on that. That's about a 4.1% increase in taxes. And really three things have gone on to um, increases and you know he's looking at um, a percent a percent and a half higher than inflation over 21 years which is not terribly bad but he's paying for all the sprawl that's going on in the city of Rochester and um, also back about 10 years ago there was a large shift from uh, shift of property taxes from commercial properties to residential properties which um, increased the residential rates as well 
And then there's also then, um, you know, Tim Pawlenty, um cutting the um, cutting LGA, which again uh, transfers, um, which tends to raise property taxes here in Rochester as well. So all that being said, he was still only seeing a one or a one and a half percent increase in his property taxes over 21, um, you know, a year for 21 years, and that's actually pretty good to live in a community as great as Rochester. So um, I appreciate that um, John Wade came up and. Um, argued that the um, increase in taxes was too high. Um, our proposed was 8.5%, so those statements you got in the mail are absolutely worthless because in reality, the um, levy increase is 3.5%. If um, Tim Pawlenty had um, fulfilled his promise when he was running for office to um, that um, not to cut LGA because it just means an increase in property taxes, um, the same same city budget, we'd be looking at a decrease of 20 to 25 percent in property taxes. So I think it's just a, um, you know, a statement of, you know, no new taxes is and always has been a, a um, hoax. A hoax. Um, you know, I, I, I was, I thought that when we started this process, we were going to um, actually see the second consecutive year of the city budget decreasing. That that did not happen, mostly in part due to the. Um, the uh, new public works garage being built and opening and the bonding starting on that. Um, so I um, at, the, at the meeting, if you watch the video, I did um, I was corrected at the meeting that the um, the city budget did go up this year. However, it's um, it's a very small increase in the overall budget, and quite frankly, that's I'm um, going from no furloughs t um, this year or um, to no furloughs this year from furloughs last year. So. That's a um, net increase. Just our employee costs are going up um, five percent this year, so that's something that we have to deal with, um, you know. And um, one of the things that was kind of controversial was the um, you know bringing in some people to take care of this landscaping in the highway areas, and um, it's going to it's much less than um, what was originally talked about. But one of the neat things about that, and I'll, it's timely today, is that. Um, those folks who will be doing um, some uh, landscaping maintenance in the summer, they'll be available for driving snow plows in the winter. And we actually didn't quite have enough snow plow drivers to cover all of our snow plows. So it'll be nice having our uh, snow plowing back up to full strength. And, um, on a day like today where we just had a massive snowstorm, um, it's good to um, it's good to have that going. Um, Finally, we also um, we also adopted the ROCOG 2040 plan, which is kind of our long-range transportation plans. So um, that's what's going on at the City Council this week. Um, I'm going to put my hat back on, and um, I certainly look like crap today because i got a lot of shoveling still to do. And um, boy, I think I'll be able to uh, cancel that uh, workout at the Athletic Club today with all the snow, snow shoveling. So I hope you're having a great holiday season, uh, and I'll see you next time.